And like even if I'm in Zen Kusa Dutch and I'm making a punch, I'm kind of if I would imagine now the peanut butter is this mass of stuff right here, and when I punch, I'm kind of squeezing in on it. So the only place it can evacuate is that direction. So I kind of shore up my body. So internally, my body's constantly shoring up. So this really intimate connection of all the little micro movements of my body when I'm punching I have that kind of like feeling. What I to Toshiyuki, boom, boom. It's like my whole body is kind of like this half of my body is inflecting. You see what I'm saying? It's not just this gross, my hand coming down thing. It's my whole body, that edge of my body inflecting. And I think various kata are teaching these sorts of body intelligence or sensibilities. Everybody that's really relaxed, whether they're rolling on the ground or whatever, do so much better because they're not creating this, this situation of conflict. Yet they're controlling it because they still have a sense of connection. So I would say let that kind of be a little bit of a premium. That when you move into him, you're not tight. It's not a tightness thing. It's more like a just connection thing. Just a connection thing. Now I'm, I'm on his center. I'm not caught. I'm still my own person. You see what I'm saying? So this is kind of a soft, amorphic thing. And I want you to, I want you to imagine, it's like, you can't really do much against that. Because if I, if I took a stick and I held it on my hand, I could balance it, right? But if I took a chain, you can't do that, right? But the chain still has this alignment. And if I were to drop it, each link would fall independently, but they would all fall along the same line. That's sort of how you want to comport your body. And, and when you do that, your karate will get so far away from this rigid robotic thing that most people would associate with not so good karate, this sort of stiff thing, you know. I would say your karate should be, should be really alive and really relaxed. It's not this edgy thing. So much comes out of the energy of your legs. So this, this is going to have a little bit of that feeling. I'm going to just deviate, cut in like that, and be nice and tight. So I don't want to be out here. If I'm out here, then I have to rely on my leg or pulling my arm. But if it's my center, then it's just my center that makes this feel. You see, that, that's so much more different, and it's definitely so much more efficient. It was really my leg, it wasn't really my arm. It was just I'm kind of let, like letting my center be in the right spot. See what I'm saying? Almost, almost like Kobe Tsudachi. <laughs> Similar look. Okay? Let's try that easy. Like when they come in, you don't want to move around their leg and, you know, I mean, you, but basically, you want to kind of create something that he just can't quite. Like I, I have a shape here that he is now deforming around my shape. I'm not letting him anchor my stance. And then as an after effect, trying to, so I would say somebody may be stepping a little too far because you're trying to get around this leg. When in fact, you want to be hugging this leg. You want to be, you want to be booting him out of that space. So you're in that space. And you would love to do that before he actually plants. You'd love to do that right there. So he never, when he was, when he thought he was going to be like that, that was not available anymore. And now he's like that. And that's a, that's a don't deform your shape. So it's integrity of your position and a bit of a timing issue. So as soon as you sense his movement, you go in. You see what I'm saying? And then it's almost effortless. Okay. So don't be afraid to, I don't want to say not annoy your partner, but take your space. Just be friendly, but take your space. When you work with your partner, you really don't try to grab them back if you can. In other words, if he grabs me, most, have, most, most people's reaction is when they, someone grabs you, you want to grab them. You know, and, and in fact, what you really don't want to do is you don't want to grab. You want, you want to just kind of maintain this sort of connection to your partner when you move. So in this exercise, when he comes in, uh, maybe go this way so I can see a little better. When, when he comes in, and you move, and you move into him, you don't want to grab on them. So I'm not grabbing at all. I'm actually just making a frame. Like this is just my soft but integrity connected frame so that we don't end up we don't end up wrestling because I'm grabbing it. I'm just creating a frame. You see the difference? There's no energetic to as a rebuttal. Okay, so try to avoid the psychological tendency when one guy pushes, the other guy has to push. One guy grabs, the other guy grabs. When you're here, you have to grab to throw him. No, you just make the shape. Just make that shape. Okay? Yeah, try it one more time. My subconscious mind has, um, it's piecing together a puzzle 
that I'm probably not even aware of in my conscious mind. And so it knows what that little missing piece is out there. You follow what that idea? Yes. And it will gravitate towards it. Like somebody will say something in class, whether it's, you know, like last night we were talking about the, the form isn't the shape, but it's sort of the resonating line inside the shape. And you might be right at that place where that, that's like the next piece that sits in your puzzle, okay? So I think as we, as we expand as humans, that's really what the experience is, is we're expanding as humans, you know? The freed bird always flies up. It doesn't go back in the cage. And the way that works, I think, is that we, we sort of associate that thing that's right at the cusp, right on the outside of what our level of understanding. We associate it with things that we already have some understanding. Like we kind of approach it from things that are somewhat similar, and then we kind of reel that thing in. Uh, you know, it's like even if you think of like if you reach out for a glass that's outside your range, your hand conforms essentially to the shape of the glass, then you grasp it and you pull it into your reality. And I think this is how we learn new concepts. We you take something to, oh, I kind of feel that. Like when I watch like Kawazoi Sensei do a downward block one time, I'm like, oh, I just felt something on the edge of my forearm. I had such an empathic reaction to his demonstrating the downward block. And I knew, wow, I gotta watch that for a little while because, and then I started feeling it. And then I started seeing what he was doing in his Gidambara. Like, I was basically reaching for the glass and pulling it in. Do you follow? Okay. So I think it's kind of, you know, we tend to get kind of caught up in the minutia and, you know, the details and pleasing our teacher and doing well on a tournament or whatever. But I think the over, the underlying journey is this gradual expansion of our being. And I think you have to really kind of step up and recognize that's really what's going on. And to make yourself available is a type of talent. You know, we think about refining technique and making technique really piercing, but Maybe we have to think about refining our quality of approach always. Like, how do you make your inquiry richer so that every experience you have has more value than the last? Does that make sense? Then your training will build momentum and it won't be difficult to maintain a practice over 50 years.